Hi YouTube, Geometal Star here. I thought I'd share some of my thoughts on the new documentary Cosmos, a space-time odyssey hosted by Neil deGrasse Tyson. One of the things I think is great about Cosmos is that it's brought to us by people in the industry that have great experience and love for this sort of subject matter. And their goal for presenting the subject matter to the mass public is to inspire and educate via exposure and experience and to hopefully keep this from becoming a reality. We now return to Carl Sagan's Cosmos, edited for Rednecks. I'm Carl Sagan. Just how old is our planet? Scientists believe it's four hundreds and hundreds of years old. Scientists have determined that the universe was created by a God. Big Bang. If you look at the bones of a Jesus Rex, it's clear by the use of carbon dating that Mountain Dew is the best soda ever made. Cosmos is brought to us by executive producer Anne Druyan who incidentally was Carl Sagan's spouse and was intimately involved with the original Cosmos, making this reboot a spiritual sibling to the original because, in a way, they have the same mother. On a side note, the story to Jodie Foster's sci-fi movie Contact was written by both Druyan and Sagan. If you haven't seen it, check it out. It's a great flick. It's really deep and philosophical. It's pretty cool. All right. Seth MacFarlane. We all know him as the creator of Family Guy and the co-creator of American Dad and The Cleveland Show. And not to mention the infamous uh, movie Ted, which he co-produced and co-wrote. Um, at least it had, you know, Mark Wahlberg and Mila Kunis, who's a hottie. <laughs> anyway, it's a hilarious movie. If you haven't checked that out. Another recommendation by me. Go check it out. It's really cool. And, um, well, Seth MacFarlane, he was actually the executive producer for Cosmos. MacFarlane is perfect as a contributor for bringing Cosmos to life because he has no qualms about telling it like it is. Cosmos is also brought to us by Mitchell Canald. He executively produced Dirty Dancing and Little Monsters. I am not kidding. You can look it up. I don't know what else that guy's done since then, besides Cosmos, because those movies are really old. Anyway, uh, Brandon Braga. I got really excited when I saw his name in the beginning credits, because his projects include being the executive producer for Terra Nova, Flash Forward, 24, Star Trek Enterprise, Star Trek Voyager, and Star Trek Next Generation, along with other various sci-fi and Star Trek projects. Uh, we also have the co-executive producer, Jason Clark, who worked on TED with McFarlane, but also did things like Stuart Little and Monster House. And of course, the documentary of this scope needs a great host and narrator, and we've got one. Neil deGrasse Tyson. You know, from television. Yeah, uh, of course. Very nice to meet you. No, the pleasure is mine. Yes, Neil deGrasse Tyson. He is passionate about science education, and it shows as he hosts the show. I don't want to spoil the show, but early on, Neil mentions that the reality of nature can be more wondrous than imagination. And that what we know has been brought to us by a simple set of rules. Test ideas by experimentation and observation. Build on ideas that pass the test. Reject the failures. Follow the evidence wherever it leads. And of course, question everything. Which I pretty much uh, think translates to no blind faith. Yeah, okay, anyway, accept these terms and the cosmos is yours. With that said, I'm excited for episode number two, and I can't wait to see where the series takes us. The winning combination of Neil deGrasse Tyson's persona and the awesome writing, animation, and visual effects brought to us by the production team I mentioned earlier will make Cosmos, a space-time odyssey, an instant classic for anyone with a willingness 
to simply not be ignorant to the universe that surrounds us. On that note, thank you. Have a great night.